I'm not, I'm not good at flowers. Yeah, I We'll call this meeting of the Packet County Planning and Zoning Committee to order. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Public notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statutes so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. This meeting is conducted under Wapaka County Resolution Number 12, 2021-2022, regarding remote governance. Committee and board members may attend in person or remotely. Below is the access on YouTube. This meeting may inadvertently cause a quorum of other county committees or the county board of supervisors. No business decisions of any other committees or the board of supervisors will be conducted at this meeting. Roll we'll call at this time indicates uh, we're missing one member, uh, but if uh, if he shows up, then we'll we'll correct we'll adjust the roll call. Could you get a chance to review the agenda, Chairman? I make a motion uh, to approve as presented. Thank you, sir. Second. All second. Moved by Supervisor Federwood, seconded by Supervisor Muck to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Next is the minutes. Make a motion to approve them as printed. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. Moved by Supervisor Monk, seconded by Supervisor Kussman to approve the minutes as printed. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Public comment. At this time, the floor is open for public comment on items not on the agenda, but no decisions can be made. I just have one thing, uh, an acquaintance of mine, Galen Hendrickson uh, rents a property in the Spencer Lake Bible Camp area. He's a minister, and he has an empty lot that he has a garden on and has had a wooden fence surrounding it for, I don't know how many years, five, maybe more. And uh, now he's been uh, told by zoning that uh, the fence is not to code. So what the, the situation is out there, he does not own the property. Assemblies of God Church owns all the lots and all the properties are lease arrangements. And so I, I, uh, I question why this, this is being enforced on a, a property like this. Uh, I, I feel a little bit like maybe being targeted and also um, how do I want to say this? Uh, $800 is, is a, an exorbitant fee for a fence. And I know in the town of Scandinavia, we've been trying to get a fence around a nuisance junkyard, and we can't seem to get anywhere getting something going on it. And so here we've got a $800 penalty being charged on somebody for a garden, and we can't get a, a fence around a nuisance junkyard. So that's just a comment. Would, would you like us to respond to that, Mr. Chairman? Are you ready to respond? I, I, I believe so. I don't think we can. If we can't make any decision. Sure yeah. 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 yeah, public right. comment is just co public comment. So the proper, the proper thing to do would have had it uh, uh, as an agenda item, Jim, if you wanted to talk about it, because um, yeah. you're the chair. So you could, you're in control of the agenda and not truly public. Um, so if, if you want to respond, it's got to be on the next agenda. Correct. Thank you, Diane. Yep. Okay, with that, we'll go on to the first public hearing. Okay, the Planning and Zoning Committee meeting and the public hearings to be considered today, Tuesday, August 24th, 2021, are open to the public. Anyone present may speak, provided they stand up and identify themselves and have filled out a notice of public <laughs> appearance sheet, which is located in the box by the entrance door. Anyone attending via phone or Zoom meeting uh, may speak, provided they identify themselves by name and address before doing so. 
We're recording these proceedings, so it's important that you state your name and address before addressing the committee. We request that you do not interfere with or interject comments while another person has the floor. The chair will permit adequate time for anyone wishing to speak and may compel the attendance of witnesses. The following hearings have been published as class one and class two notices in accordance with chapter 985 of the Wisconsin statutes and will be heard by this committee this morning. Number one is the comprehensive plan amendments in the town of Towns of Mukwa, Lebanon, and Royalton. Number two is Jeffrey A. Afrath. Number three, Stephen J. and Julie A. Mota. Number four is Eric E. and Jamie A. Sager. Number five is Beth J. Romberg Trust. Number six is Edward A. Romberg. Seven Robert Robin L. Pellet and another Robin L. Pellet here. The County Zoning Committee is, dele is delegated unit of the County Board by ordinance to consider zoning ordinance amendments and decide conditional uses. The Zoning Committee is interested in hearing all pertinent evidence. Witnesses in favor of the application will be called first, those opposed, second, and then others. After each witness has appeared, he or she may be questioned by the committee. Persons present who are not appearing as witnesses will be allowed to propose relevant questions to be put to the committee. However, the chair reserves the right to rule on relevancy and no member of the audience will be allowed to give testimony without being sworn. Because a record of this uh, hearing is being tape recorded, it is impertinent that each witness or speaker identify themselves and their interest in the subject matter of the hearing before speaking. Please speak in the direction of the microphone on the presentation table. The time limit on the presentations may be imposed. I do not, I do request that you avoid repetition and limit your remarks to the subject matter being considered. Neither the committee nor your neighbors will benefit from hearing statements that repeat opinions which have already been expressed or that relate to matters other than the case before the committee. Personal attacks and abusive testimony, gross hearsay, rumor, or gossip will be ruled out of order by the chair, subject to the immediate appeal of the majority of the committee. With that, we'll call the first public hearing uh, to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take uh, testimony regarding the proposal to amend the preferred land use map in the comprehensive plan. The proposed amendments. Uh, to the preferred, preferred land use map are located in the town of Mukwa to amend the preferred land use category for a parcel located in the northeast corner of the northeast corner of section 22, town of Mukwa, parcel 15, 22, 11, 21, lying along Jennings Road, fire number N3673, Wapaka County, Wisconsin. Uh, from residential to agricultural on approximately two uh, 1.91 acres. And also the town of Lebanon to amend <clears throat> a preferred use land use category from a 40 parcel located in the northeast quarter of the southeast quarter, section 32 in the township of Lebanon, uh, parcel number 1132-4116 lying along Larry Road, fire number N5043, Wapaka County, Wisconsin, from residential to agricultural on approximately four and a half acres. Also, the town of <coughs> Royalton, uh, to amend the preferred land use category for a parcel located in the northeast quarter of the southeast quarter of section four of the township of Royalton, Parcel number 164413, lying along Blue Heron Lane, fire number N4620, Wapaka County, Wisconsin, from agriculture to residential on approximately 2.01 acres. Can the secretary read the names of the persons notified of these here? Jim Kearns, Tom Chairman, Jeanette Zelensky, Tom Clerk, Michelle, Tom Supervisor. <laughs> Matthew Mansky, Town Supervisor, Pack County Corporation Council, Wapaka County Non-Metallic Mine Operators, 
Paul and Sarah Abel, Theodore and Beth Coppersmith, Matt 25 LL Grumside and Trust, Matt 25 LLC, Chad Monica Gray, Anthony D. Kent, Randall and Elizabeth Kent, Eric and Jamie Sager, Thomas Wheeler et al., Troy Wheeler, Alan Tank, Town Supervisor, Mary Shane Rock, Town Clerk, Jeff Henschke, Town Supervisor, Donald Laughlin, Town Supervisor, Jesse and Michelle Bronson, Egan Brothers Partnership, Norbert Gazans, Thomas and Vicki Heisey, Jeffrey Pathgraf, Jason Rice, David and Joe Ritchie, Daryl Schramm, Christopher and Jessica Siebert, Brenda Fontlin, Mark Robert Vesoki, Michael Weddlestack, Gerald Rowland, Town Chairman, Lori Redenzel, Town Clerk, Marilyn, I'm sorry, Marlon Ebert, Town Supervisor, Mike Weeders, Town Supervisor, John and Marcia Jekyll, David and Judith Cranick, Michael Levisell, Stephen and Julie Modi, Neil and Don Papendorf, David and Julie Wenzel, David and Judith Cranick. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee conducted an on site inspection of these properties. Will the Planning and Zoning Department present the application for the comprehensive plan amendments in the towns of Marqua, Lebanon, and Rowe? Sure. Uh, so, really, is pretty self explanatory based on what was already uh, read off uh, the, in the town of Makwa. Uh, they're going from residential to agriculture to allow for the conditional use permit that's required. Also, in the same situation in the town of Lebanon, same thing, going from residential to agriculture and the preferred land use map. And as well in the town of Royalton, uh, in order to uh, go move forward with the result that they're looking forward to, they need to first get a comp plan amendment from agriculture to residential. For land use, these all do have sister applications that are, are companion applications, which you'll be seeing later in the, the meeting. So, we do the, the conditional use permits first, and then, then we'll be moving on to the next step. Yep, we'll be doing the comprehensive plan. Yep, yep. Chairman, I just have a question. I always forget how I know we have to do this to allow whatever they want to do. But is there, has there become a, a limited factor when you want to go from residential to ag? I mean, in size and acreage and all. So the the size it gets taken care of. Well, so the yes, the towns all have minimal lot sizes associated. Each with are, some are different than others. That's right. Okay. Yep. I just wanted because it looked like kind of small here. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is there any other testimony that we need to consider for this? Any other testimony in favor of this application? Yes. Yep, come forward. You swear a testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. And uh, Shaw, E9083, Tonawakwa, London. Uh, Home supervisor. Uh, the Sagers are are uh, trying to get a or are running a business off of this land, and we just we're just trying to bring everything in compliance with it. You know, it kind of happened backwards, but we're we're okay with it. <clears throat> so this one of Oh, Jennings. Jennings. Okay. Jennings. Yep. Eric and Jamie say. I've never been on that road before. That was uh, <laughs> kind of kind of out in the country there. It's a lot of houses back in there, but uh, I'm, I'm on the other side of the county, and uh, Jennings is that's when I was going through New London. I was hoping that Jennings Road was also Jennings Street, so that, and it was. So oh, it is until it reaches. God's country. There, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any? I, I'm in favor of it. <laughs> Do you wish to say? Why? Do you want me to come? You do absolutely. It's yeah. totally up to you. Okay. We'll have another, we'll have another 
hearing part of it. <laughs> Is what right. a testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, absolutely. Okay, you. State your name and address. Aaron and Sager, and 3673 Jennings Road in London, Wisconsin. I'm the landowner. Sure. Um, we did go about things a little bit backwards, but uh, we're here hopefully to make it right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's that's really all I'm looking for. Okay. Thank you. Any further testimony in favor of this application? I think that was the third time. Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? We have any letters? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have the town recommendation form, uh, planning commission resolution and ordinances adopting these comprehensive plan amendments at the township level. Um, if you'd like me to read them off, I can, but they are all in support. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Your, your statement that uh, they're all in favor of support is concise and uh, saves us a little time, unless anybody's got any questions. No. Okay, does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're, we're absolutely in favor of the, these amendments being adopted. That being the situation, is there any more questions from the committee? If not, we've been ordered to, to have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we would uh, approve the respective amendments for the town of Muckle, town of Lebanon, and the town of uh, as presented. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Federwitz to approve these plans as presented, town of Muckle, Lebanon, and Royalton. Mark Sorry. seconds. Thank you. Supervisor Muck seconds. Uh, roll call vote, Muck. Yes. Kussman. Yes. Federowitz. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing. Okay, I'll second it. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor <coughs> Kussman. Second by Supervisor Mutz to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. I didn't you know that they were taking a complete resolution category. No, no, no. All this, 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 this is the one right here. Oh, it's the same time. I would then take a first Right. I know. Yeah. the that Yep. Was it raining and I only had it worked out pretty good? Okay. Talk to me in the dark. Okay, <clears throat> with that, we'll call the second public hearing to order. Purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Jeffrey R. Uh, Pathrath, located in part of the northeast quarter, the southeast quarter of section 32, town of Lebanon, lying along Larry Road, file number N5043, Wataka County, Wisconsin, parcel number 11321116. Or a petition for a zoning map amendment from the rural residential RR district to the agricultural and woodland transition district, AWT, and a conditional use permit application, contractor shop, landscaping contractor, in the agricultural and woodland transition AWT district on approximately four and a half acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Alan Tank, Tom Chairman, Mary Shane, <coughs> Tom Clerk, Jeffrey Hunchy, Tom Supervisor, Donald Laughlin, Tom Supervisor, Bernie Ritchie, District Supervisor, Packer County Corporation Council, Jesse and Michelle Brownson, Ethan Brothers Partnership, Norbert Gazins, Thomas and Vicki Heisey, Chuck and Pathra, Jason Weiss, David and Joe Ritchie, Daryl Graham, Christopher and Jessica Seaberg, Brenda Bondin, Mark. Robert, Michael, Hereby direct a copy of this affidavit part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We'll now hear the application of Jeffrey A. Pathman. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? Oh, 
there's another hearing that's that's associated with oh. oh sorry no don't it's, it's several, steps to, yeah. several steps to the yeah. process and i'm not seeing anybody here in to represent mr Catherine's uh, yeah. interest uh, we hadn't heard of any Thing of that, or would you like us to kind of walk through what they have going on for it? Usually, you want them. Uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, I would because of yeah. that. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Uh, can we can we uh, have a motion to uh, change the order of the agenda here and do this one later in case somebody shows up? Or you can get a little bit. Thank you. Move by Supervisor Murphy to uh, uh, move to the half raft hearing later in the agenda. Should they? Show up. Second. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> Word by Supervisor Murphy, seconded by Supervisor Cusman to amend the agenda to move to Jeffrey A. Pathrap uh, hearing later. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. <clears throat> With that, we'll call the third public hearing to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Stephen J. And Julie A. Montoff, located in part of the northeast corner of the southeast corner of Section 4, Township of Royalton, lying along Blue Heron Lane, fire number N4620, Opaca County, Wisconsin, parcel number 1604413, for a petition for a zoning map amendment from the Agricultural and Woodland Transition AWT District to a rural residential uh, RR district. On approximately 2.01 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Joe Cohen, Town Chairman, Lori Redenzel, Town Clerk, Marlon Ebert, Town Supervisor, Mike Leaders, Town Supervisor, Patricia Craig, District Supervisor, Beck County Corporation Council, Department of Natural Resources, Clear to Bill Rezepek, John Jekyll, David Judith Cranick, Michael Levizow, Stephen Drew Motors, Neil and Don Papendor, David and June Wenzel. Mayor Brett, direct a copy of this affidavit be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We'll now hear the application of Stephen J. and Julie A. Moda. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? This is not what I can ask. <laughs> I can start you both in at the same time. Please raise your right hands. Yeah, just swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please state your names and your address and, and tell us what the application is about. Have a seat. I'm Steve Motif and 4620 Blue Heron Lane, New London, Wisconsin. Julie Motif and 4620 Blue Heron Lane. Thank you. So you want to change your uh, your uh, your zoning here. So you want to just give us a short story on, on what you want to I think the majority of that neighborhood is already rural residential. Somehow, two parcels got left out. That was a horror house in the vacant lot next to it. Um, to do to move on with a, a different change, we need to have our zoning changed to rural residential, which would match pretty much the whole neighborhood already. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. guess it's the first step in the multiple steps that we need to do. Yep. yep. Okay. Does somebody in, in your neighborhood to have a snowplow? <laughs> Just look at it's nice private. Oh, no, you're the <laughs> snowplow man. Take care of everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty straightforward application. Yeah. I guess, Mr. Chairman, my only question was how, yeah, how did they get forgotten? <laughs> Well, and just a, a little point of clarification, I mean, the zoning is all egg and woodland transition Around. through there for it, but the comprehensive plan omitted them as being part of residential, which is what the first change is for. Um, and the second one is to get them to potentially be able to split a lot down the road here. For right. This is the current zoning or uh, uh, map up here. You see that basically the entire area is all zoned AWT. It's the planning, the, the preferred land use plan. And these two parcels, this one and the one immediately adjacent to it, were were different than what the surrounding area was. They were yep. planned for agriculture, and the surrounding area was was planned for residential. 
Yeah, so it's just this lot and this lot over here. For the for, for some reason, they were the only two in yeah, the preferred like, land use map that were still that weren't shown as residential in the preferred land use map. Okay. Okay. So what you guys corrected? Is there any other questions? Well, thank you. If you want to return to your seats, just in case something else comes up, I'm just going to call for more testimony. Is there any other testimony in favor of this application? Yes. Come on up. You swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. And for the record, state your name and address. Gerald Rowan, B5620 Sunrise Lane, Wyoiga, Wisconsin. Thank you. Yeah. I'm the town chairman for the town of Royalton. And the town board is very much in favor of this change. And I think they stated why we're here today. That should not have ever happened. Agriculture should have been residential a long time ago. And I, I, how long ago, I don't know. I've only been on eight years. So it happened before then. Yeah. So I'm not the guilty one. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, yeah, so we're very much in favor of this change. Yeah. It seems to be running into stuff like this on a regular basis, where it's just some things that got missed the first time around. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess, Trevor, the only question again is how did they get caught now? So they were looking to when they, when they there's a there's a separate issue where they're looking at potentially splitting the parcel that's going to be coming later. So that we kind of that we, we reverse engineered it. We realized that okay, they're currently don't need the LT. Then we took at the preferred land use. We saw that their uh, the, the designation was agriculture. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. And I'll call for more testimony. Any further testimony in favor of this application? I think that was the third time. Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Any letters? Uh, we do have the town recommendation from the town of Royalton regarding the Stephen and Blue Mullins property. That's number 1604413. The current zoning district is agriculture and urban transition. The proposed zoning district is rural residential. Um, what will be the proposed uses of the parcel if the rezoning is approved? Residential. What are the existing uses of the adjacent lands of parcel and are they compatible? Residential. Is a proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the county comprehensive plan? Yes. The subject property is located in a well established residential subdivision <laughs> setting and has been classified in the town's current land use map when the comprehensive plan is residential. Is a proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Goals, objective strategies, the town has established land use classification of the subject property residential map 821 and is consistent with the goals listed in section 8.8. .8 of the town comprehensive plan. Subject property is located in a well-established residential subdivision setting and is consistent with the land use policies listed in section 8.9 of the town's comprehensive plan. This proposal aligns with the town of Royalton's desire to address special needs residents, low income, and main maintaining existing housing stock referenced in sections 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, and 2.9 of the town's comprehensive plan. Town Planning Commission recommend approval. Planning Commission Chair Dwayne Bork, dated May 12, 2021. Town Board recommend approval. Town Chairman Gerald Nolan. Town Clerk Ori Redenzel, dated May 13, 2021. Thank you, Jason. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We absolutely do. Um, given the township's position on this and amending the comprehensive plan for um, this to be consistent with that, we're absolutely in favor of this application being granted. Okay, is there any other questions from the committee? If not, we'd be in order to have a motion on the zone map amendment. Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Moved by Supervisor Kussman, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to approve the zone map amendment. Roll call vote. Muck? Yes. Kussman? Yes. Betterwitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing. Second. second. 
Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Kussman, seconded by Supervisor Muck to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Okay, with that, we'll call the fourth public hearing to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for hearing. E and Jamie A. Sager, located in the northeast cor uh, quarter of the northeast quarter of Section 22, Township of Mukwa, lying along Jennings Road, tire number N3673, Wapaka County, Wisconsin, parcel number 15221121 for a petition for a zoning map amendment from the rural residential R district to the agricultural and woodland transition AWT district in the and a conditional use permit application for contractor shop, shop landscaping contractor in the agricultural and woodland transition AWT district on approximately 1.91 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Jim Kearns, town chairman, Jeanette Zelensky, town clerk, Lee Shaw, town supervisor, Matthew Mansky, town supervisor, Kenneth Yeager, district supervisor, Rebecca County Corporation Council, Paul and Sarah Abel, Theodore and Beth Coppersmith, and Trust Matt 25 LLC, Chad and Monica Gray, Anthony Kent, Randall and Elizabeth Kent, Eric and Jamie Sager, Thomas Wheeler, et al., Troy Wheeler. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We'll now hear the application for Harry P. E. and Jamie A. Sager. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? Sorry, both in at the same time. We swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Yeah. Please state your names and address and have a seat and tell us tell us what it's about. Eric Sager, uh, N3673 Jennings Road. Um, we're here. <coughs> Jamie Sager, N3673 Jennings Road. <laughs> so we're here to, because we've been running a business. We've lived there for 15 years, 16 years. And to our knowledge, we weren't doing anything wrong until we put up a shot and then everything kind of snowballed. <laughs> sure. So now we're here to hopefully make things right. Yeah. So is it the uh, shed, the process of the permits for the shed that got brought this? Well, it was during construction of the shed that sure. Um, somebody came out and said, uh, you're running a business here and you're not zoned correctly. Okay. So, yeah, I believe that the shed really has nothing to do with anything other than there's a shed there. Sure. Right. And I think you identified it correctly. That's what brought it to our attention. But this isn't this isn't an after the facts situation or anything. It, it is, and we, we have received a complaint on the uh, on the use for it as well, in addition to the, the permit that I've been taken out. So it is an after the fact situation. It wasn't to my knowledge that it was after the fact until we started going through it. But you you did you work in, in, in the process of doing it. No, no, I we I had I, I, had, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong, I guess. But you were at building the shed, is my point. No. no. The, the, the shed. The issue is the business. The business, not, not the, the shed. shed. Yeah, the shed, yeah, well, the shed was permitted. Oh, everything oh, was good with the I, shed. Yeah. I understand. The business you've been running for 15 years. But, but then they received the uh, zoning or somebody the town received a complaint about the business being around there. I understand that. So it was during that process yeah, that this right all here. went opened up. Let me just ask you a general question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. When you went in front of the town board, did you realize at that point, or did they ask you to, did you get a permit for a business? It it come down from county level. It didn't come down from the Okay, it never started there because it started with the shed. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Is there any other questions from the committee? Okay. Who's the scissors? We own a landscaping Landscape. company. We don't have, we just store our equipment on premises. We, it's not a retail site. It's not a nothing of that sort. Pickup truck, trailer, uh, dump truck, dump truck, lawnmowers. Yeah. yeah. And from there we go to wherever. 90% of the time in the summer, most of the equipment's not even there. Understand. Yeah. Got it out trying to make money for you. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, memory serves me correct. We had one of these just a few meetings ago, didn't we? Yeah. It was similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions from the committee at this point? Thank you. We're going to call for more testimony. And if you want to just oh, go ahead. Why the people only storing important terms, not operating as a business or doing any retail sales or anything like that. What is the store? Well, this is actually a typical contractor shop. The majority of all contractor shops don't actually do, they don't, if, if it was actually retail, there'd be an entirely different situation. Okay. That was our confusion. Also. That was our confusion too. Because so, we don't advertise at our home. There's, yeah, there's no other than the <laughs> names on the side of the truck. That's yeah. Legit. Yeah. They're, they're now, we now we I, understand. I didn't that. see any sign out at the property. I could have no, missed it, no. but I, I didn't recall seeing no, any. No, we, we never, our home is our home, other, yeah. other than it. Okay. Well, thank you for to stick around. If there are any other questions after a little bit, I'm going to call for more testimony. Is there any other testimony in favor of this application? Any other? Okay, thank you. We already swore them in. Do we need to swear them in again? I'm still sworn. Still sworn in. Good. Have a seat. I'm still the lead shot. Yeah. Yeah. Still the lead shot. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're all in favor of this. Uh, it's kind of backwards, but. You know, you come to see that you know it's the right thing to do to uh, get it going and you know keep it going so that uh, the rest of the town you know doesn't object to something like that. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Okay. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Last call. Any more testimony in favor of the application? Any testimony in opposition? Any testimony <laughs> in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Any letters? Uh, we do have the town recommendations forms for both the zone map amendment and conditional use permit. Uh, for the zone map amendment for the Eric Sager property, parcel number 15, 22, 11, 21. Current zoning district is rural residential. Proposed district is agriculture and living transition. What will the proposed use of the parcel be if the rezoning is approved? Landscaping and contractor shop. Is the proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Town Planning Commission recommend approval. Planning, Planning Commission Chairperson B. Shaw, dated May 26, 2021. Town Board recommend approval. Town Chairman Jim Kearns, Town Clerk Jeanette Selinski, dated July 13, 2021. For the conditional use permit recommendation, also for the same property, is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as well as the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as well as the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Town Planning Commission recommend approval. Planning Commission Chairperson Lee Shaw, dated May 26, 2021. Town Board recommend approval. Jim, I'm sorry. Jim Kearns, Town Chairman. Town Clerk Jeanette Zelensky, dated July 13, 2021. Thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? We do, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, given the township's uh, position with this being approved, with no conditions applied, that would uh, also be our recommendation that both the zone map amendment be approved and the conditional use permit 
with no conditions of Thank you. Is there any other questions from the committee? If not, well, we'll do this two-step vote here. The first vote, well, we'll need a motion for the zone map amendment. So move, Mr. Chair. Thank Second. you. Moved by Supervisor Federer, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to approve the zone map amendment. Roll call vote, Mark. Yes. Kevin <coughs> Yes. Federer. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Zone map uh, motion carries. <laughs> now we need a motion for the conditional use permit. Supervisor Murphy. I'll move Thank to you. approve. Is there a second? Five seconds. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Murphy, seconded by Supervisor Muck to approve the conditional use permit. A roll call vote, Mock. Yes. Kuslin. Yes. Berwitz. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing. Second it. Thank you. Motion by moved by Supervisor Kuslin, seconded by Supervisor Muck to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, the opposed motion carries. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, Thank with that, we'll call the fifth public hearing to order. The pur purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Beth J. Rumberg Trust, located in part of the southwest quarter and the south, uh, northeast quarter, and the northwest quarter of the northeast quarter of Section 5, Tom Larrabee, lying along Morbowski Road, the Packer County, Wisconsin. Uh, part of parcels uh, 10, 05, 13, 4, and 12, 3. For a petition for a zone map amendment from the Agricultural and Woodland Transition AWT District to the Agricultural Retention AR District on approximately 3.42 acres to accommodate a boundary line adjustment with adjacent lots. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Lynn Jepson, Tom Chairman, Stacy Jepson, Tom Clerk, David Burgett, Tom Supervisor, Gene Meyer, Tom Supervisor, Dennis Wengelski, District Supervisor, Edward Romberg, Agent, Douglas Arndt, Douglas and Nola Arndt, Ivan and Shirley Burmeister, Carl May, Ridgewood Farm, LLC, Edward Romberg, Irrevocable Trust, Betty Romberg Trust, Edward Romberg, and Keith Strayle. Have you been directed to copy of this affidavit be filed as part of the record of these proceedings? The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We'll now hear the application for Betty G. or J. Romberg Trust. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? Yep. Come on up to the chairs. Please take your hat off and raise your right hand. Could I could I ask you to move your hat? Oh, I'm, I'm thank sorry. you. At least my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please take your name and address and uh, tell us what the name is. is Ed Romberg, E7959 Swamp Road. And actually the uh, next uh, one we're tied together. It's, and uh, Betty is my mom. Okay. And uh, what happened here was um, 30 years ago when I bought the farm from my dad, of course, he owned the woods, the land and everything at the time. He said, I'll sell you the farmland, but I won't sell you the woods because the woods is ultimately going to be willed to my sister, Nola Arndt, that lives on the south end there. And I said, that's fine. And uh, so fast forward 30 years, I'm doing estate planning this past winter, getting all the... Uh, land uh, descriptions correct and everything. And I go like, what in the world is this? And here they had drawn the lines wrong. The woods was, you know, what was called woods was way, you know, 50, 75 feet into my field there on the north end. <laughs> and then on the west side, part way down, they decided to jot the 150 feet out into my uh, field. And, uh, and then it cut right through that swamp there. And uh, so I felt it was, Pretty important to get this straightened out, especially while my mom is still around. So basically, what we're wanting to put from woodland into agriculture, that land was always agriculture, it just was drawn wrong originally, and vice versa, or likewise, the one that's going to go from agriculture into woodland was part of that swamp, which I don't care, I can go with the woods. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, just for Mr. Romberg, sorry, for my benefit, did you have to resurvey this then? Or? Oh, yeah, very expensive. <laughs> so it was not surveyed? Well, I don't know who in the world did this survey originally that drew these goofy lines. It must have happened in 1991 when I bought the farm from my dad, because prior to that, he owned the woods and yeah. the land entirely, and now we were going to carve it out. And I don't know how in the world that happened. Uh, he must have had some kind of acreage in mind for the woods, and they just made it come out. <laughs> okay, that's probably what happened. Drew a line. Yeah. Well, I suppose uh, the one line I can see if it was an existing parcel, you know, half, well, it's not quite half of 40 either. It's uh, Well, the, the yeah. uh, northern part there is a 52, and then, then it's a 40 south of that. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's. Uh, yeah, must be the correction line up there. Oh, it was Where? The, yeah. must be a must be a correction for it. Yeah, right. On yep. the end of the uh, township or whatever. Yep. Well, it's just boundary line adjustments. So it's well, and, and the other thing, like you said, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, when you do a survey, now you find out there's more acreage just in that forty than what you thought to it. Well, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, less. but I mean, now I'm, because if my mom had passed away and I found this out after the fact, then I would have been dealing with my sister and husband. That might not have gone well. I don't know. <laughs> no. No. Family is different. Yeah. Because, I mean, I don't know if you went out there and looked at it, you can plainly see it's all one big soybean field. Yeah. I drove by. Yeah. It was close. <laughs> we, we drove by and then they backed up. But just, just a note sometimes if if on some of these that have no fire number, if, if you could say between such and such fire numbers just for finding it, then we uh, put bigger bigger numbers on the, the ones that were down to the south there. If you yeah. have a actual map there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did try to call those out a little bit better so you could see them on sure. Yeah. And in my mind, it's a lot of adjustments. Yeah, it's, it's not much of a right now. Right, no. right. just planning, planning for the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Well, thank you. If you want to just take a seat for a while in case another question comes up, I'm going to call for further testimony. Got that. Is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Any letters? Uh, we do have a town recommendation form in regard to the Betty Romberg Trust property. Part of parcel 105 Current zoning district, agriculture and woodland transition. Proposed zoning district, agriculture retention. Is the proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Also, yes. Town Planning Commission recommend approval. Planning Commission Chairperson Ben Jepson, date of July 8, 2021. Town board recommend approval. Town chairman Lynn Jepson, town clerk Stacy Jepson, also dated July 8, 2021. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do. Um, Mr. Robert did a very, very good job explaining what was happening here. It is just a boundary line adjustment. The next hearing that we're going to see is going to be the same boundary line adjustment that we're dealing with. Um, in light of the fact that the township's in favor of it, this makes nothing but sense. We are absolutely in favor of this. Campaign. Are there any other questions from the committee? Seeing none, we'd be in order to have a motion to approve a or motion on the zone map amendment. Mark so moves. Second. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Mark, seconded by Supervisor Kussman to approve the zone map amendment. Roll call vote. Mark? Yes. Kussman? Yes. Berowitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you. Motion from Supervisor Cusman, seconded by Supervisor Muck to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. 
Okay, with that, we'll call the sixth public hearing order. Purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Edward A. Rumber, located in part of the southwest quarter, the northeast quarter of Section 5, Town Larry, lying along the Golski Road, Wapaka County, Wisconsin, part of parcel 10051315, for a petition for a zone map amendment from an agricultural retention AR district to an agricultural and woodland transition AWT district on approximately uh, 0.61 acres to accommodate a boundary line adjustment with an adjacent lot. Will the secretary read the names of the persons who apply to this hearing? Lynn Jepson, Sr., Tom Chairman, Stacey Jepson, Tom Clerk, David Burgess, Town Supervisor, Jim Meyer, Town Supervisor, Dennis Wangelski, District Supervisor, Everett Romberg, Douglas Arndt, Douglas Enola Arndt, Hyman Shirley Burmeister, Carl May, Woodward Farm LLC, Edward Romberg, Irrevocable Trust, Betty Romberg Trust, Edward Romberg, Keith Strader. Hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property and will now hear the application for. Edward A. Rumbert, will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? So, Diane, was so, she was sworn in previously. Swear him in again. You sworn in. You're sworn in. Still sworn yeah. in. No, you don't need to swear him in again, Jim. Okay, I just wanted to be sure. For the record. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, you can see that kind of that darker shade there where the line, the old line went right straight through it. And that's all part of kind of a, a pond with the brush in it that's really connected with the uh, woods. And so uh, uh, now the woods is gonna be bulged out a little further to be part of the woods and not part of my field anymore because it was never farmed. So, so is there another map? There, I'm thinking it's. Yes, there's a small portion just to the west of what we were looking at before. Yeah, use it. Oh, if you go back up there, it shows it a little better. Oh, it shows it better. There, you there can go. go. There you go. Only that's twisted. Yeah, we get that. We get that twisted for you. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all part of that uh, shaded area that you can see. It goes into the woods. Also, uh, it's all one big old kind of like a pond with brush in it. Most of, the, most of the time it's got water in it, but not always. Okay. And so uh, it was requested by my brother-in-law that that become part of the woods and I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure, a little, little horse training. Sure. Yeah. Well, maybe the surveyor act is. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. <gonna> work. Sure. <laughs> that got real expensive. <laughs> Get them guys cheap. No. Well, I, it just seems pretty, yeah. pretty much done deal. I, I don't have any questions. So. Thank you. I'm, I'll call for more testimony. Is there any further testimony in favor of this application? When I'm asking for testimony, there's nobody uh, zooming or anything either, apparently. Okay. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition? Are there any letters? We do have the town recommendation form that to Edward Robert property, fire parcel 105135, current zoning district is agriculture retention. Proposed zoning district is agriculture and woodland transition in accordance with Wisconsin State Statutes 91.48. Parent A, the land is better suited for the not allowed to come with preservation district. Yes, the rezoning is consistent with any applicable comprehensive plan. Yes, the rezoning is substantially consistent with the county certified farmer preservation program plan. Yes, the rezoning will not substantially impair or limit current or future agriculture uses surrounding parts of the land that are zoned for or legally restricted to agricultural use. Yes, Tom Planning Commission recommend approval. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Lynn Jepson, July 8th, 2021. Town board recommend approval. Lynn Jepson, town chairman. Stacey Jepson, town clerk, also dated July 8th, 2021. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, this one makes nothing but sense. So we're absolutely in favor of this being Okay, any more questions? Seeing none, we've been ordered to have a, a motion concerning the zone map amendment. Move to approve. Thank you, is our second. Moved by Supervisor Kuspin, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to approve the zone map amendment. Roll call vote. Mark? Yes. Kuspin? Yes. Fairwitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing. Second that. Moved by Supervisor Kuspin, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to close the hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. Those opposed. Motion carried. With that, we'll call the seventh public hearing to order. The purpose of this area is to take testimony regarding the application of Robin L. Public, located in part of the northeast quarter of the northeast quarter of section 24 yeah. town of Little Wolf, lying along Garrity Road, fire number E7291, Wolfpack, coming Wisconsin, parcel number 1324112. For a petition for a zone map amendment from the agricultural enterprise AE district to the rural residential RR district on approximately 4.55 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Ellen Mady, town chairman, Jackie Byer, town clerk, Rod Byer, town supervisor, Joel Bonikowski, town supervisor, Mary Craig, district supervisor, Cody Bessa, Nathan. Department of Natural Resources, attention to Dale Desabek, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, attention to Kyle Zaclone, Becker County Corporation Council, Mark and Michelle Duerstein, Egan Brothers Partnership, Robin Pellet, Rickman Family Irrevocable Trust, and Roy and Susan Cease. <clears throat> I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on-site inspection of this property. We will hear the application of Robert L. Pellet. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward this morning to testify? For a testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please state your name and address. My name is Cody Besson, N8744 Bell Corners Road, Bear Creek, Wisconsin. I am the agent for the owners. Okay. I'm their contractor building the, the garage that we intend to build. So, sure. So, what what's the reason for the? So they got kind of goofy circumstances. Um, they own in two different townships. Um, we want to build across it. Uh, yeah, they're right on the line, and yeah. obviously that's not uh, not convenient. And, or, or normal, but um, because of the circumstances, we feel like it's the best answer. So um, we could take out a bunch of trees and drive a hundred dump trucks down that town road and bring in fill and build it up and spend a lot of money and get it done. Besides the expense part, our bigger concern is there's natural drainage on both sides of, I'm gonna call it their parcel, between the two parcels, there's natural drainage that runs around. Everything from the north runs downhill and runs around back to kind of lowlands behind their house. So we could achieve what we want to, but I don't think the neighbors would be very happy with us if we did do that. So that's where we're, we're at. Um, so so your best site straddles of the town line? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you get the building permits from then? Well, that's being sorted out. Um, okay. Everybody on both townships said, yeah, it's not the most convenient, but we agree it's the best means. So they we've... The plan is we're actually going to bring both building inspectors in, and upon completion, we're going to bring in both appraisers in one meeting and say, "Okay, this is how we're going to hash it out." So, okay. like I said, does this happen very often? Uh, no, no, <laughs> this is not. This is okay. definitely this is, all, yeah, yeah. No, not common at all. Yeah, no. No, and yeah, and to give a little more in, insight into what we have to deal with, but obviously we can't combine a parcel across township lines. <laughs> yeah, um, it creates assessment issues when yeah. we're doing that, just like Cody said, they're going to have to cash that up the township. The townships have met together, both the town 11 and the town of Little Wolf, to have these discussions. What we can do, instead of combining it and creating a weird thing with it, we can create a zoning lot that goes across it. So we'll have to complete a certified survey map to create the zoning lot that straddles both of them. Both parcels were zoned as, I think one was Egg, Egg Enterprise, the other one is Egg and Transition. Both were planned for residential. 
Um, so to go to the rural residential district didn't require any amending of the comprehensive plan at all. That is why we, we, we went with the rural residential district to save a little bit of time, hopefully to get things started um, this year instead of next year. So, so these two tracks weren't being split off from anything in this thing. They're already existing two. Rob already owned both of them. Yep. 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 Weird circumstances, like yep. I said. <laughs> and there had been talks of annexing one or the other, but we really only had <laughs> one little thing yeah. in the entire county that's like that, and it wouldn't really be the best to start creating freight edges on things. No. Okay. But you have to work with the topography too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm glad that one shows the topography lines. You can kind of see how how it functions. Like I said, both the east end, west end of it, all drains to the south behind them. Is this a storage shed? Correct. Uh, for his boats, and he likes to tinker on stuff. So, yep. His well, dream shed. <laughs> There, there was a boat with a wheel off the trailer when we drove by. He had a, yeah, he had a Facebook. He blew a tire this weekend, so I think he had a pretty interesting weekend. So, Oof. okay, interesting. Is there any other questions from the committee? Well, thank you. If you want to just take a seat for a little while in case something else comes up. I'm going to call for more testimony. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Any letters? We, we do have the town recommendation form. This half of, of what we're going to be looking at today is for the town of Little Wolf um, in regard to the Robin and the Pellet property, parcel 132411. Current zoning district is agriculture enterprise. Proposed district is rural residential. What will be proposed use of the parcel if the zoning is approved? Rural residence, single family home with shed for personal storage. What are the existing uses of the GS lands this parcel? Are they compatible? Big enterprise, yes, they are compatible. Is the proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the town of Comprehensive Plan? Yes. This is not affecting the use of surrounding properties. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town of Comprehensive Plan? Yes. Town Planning Commission recommend approval. Jack Byer, Planning Commission Chair, dated July 28, 2021. Town Board recommend approval. Rod Byer, Town Supervisor, Jackie Byer, Town Clerk, dated July 28, 2021. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Well, given, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Given the, the township's position on this, this is a bit of a, a weird situation that we have, but in light of the fact that the townships are working together, um, the assessors are aware of it. I don't know if they're necessarily happy with the situation because it's, it's difficult to decide which direction the, the taxes are going to go on things for it. Um, but the townships are in favor of it. And in light of that, we also are recommending approval of the application. I would think they could do a uh, square footage of that shed and make a determine how many square feet are on one side, how many square feet are on the other, and you know, whatever the rate is. This is kind of what figures once we have the survey map and we pour the concrete, we can say it's yep. this much and this much. So many feet on this side, so many square feet on this side. Yeah, it's different, but it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Is there any other questions from the committee? If there are none, then uh, this is the little wolf portion of the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so zone map amendment for the, the pellet application for the little wolf side of the adjustment. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Someone want to make that a motion? Also move. Thank you. There's a second. I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Muck, seconded by Supervisor Bedwitz to approve the. Zone map amendment for the little old portion of this Robin L. Pellet application. Roll call vote, Muck. Yes. Kussman. Yes. Fairwitz. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Motion carries. Motion closes here. Second. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Kussman, seconded by Supervisor Muck to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried.
Okay, with that, we'll move on to the eighth public hearing. And the purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application of Robert Alcala, located in front of the northwest corner of the northwest corner, section 19, Township 11, lying along Garrity Road, Wolfpack County, Wisconsin. Parcel number 11, uh, 1922, for a commission for the zoning map amendment from an agricultural woodland transition AWP district to a rural residential RR district on approximately one and one quarter acre or 1.23 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Alan Tank, town chair, Mary Shanrock, town clerk, Jeffrey Hunchy, town supervisor, Ronald Boffman, town supervisor, Richard Rowan, district supervisor. Cody Bassett, Agent, Department of Natural Resources, attention to Dale Rezebeck, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, attention to Kyle Zabon, Back County Corporation Council, Mark and Michelle Doberstein, Egan Brothers Partnership, Robin L. Pellet, Rickman Family, Irrevocable Trust, and Boyd and Susan Seuss. We hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We'll now hear the application. Will the applicant or the agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? Andrew, sworn in. Thank you. We got this cleared a little while ago. So, so now this is the town of Lebanon side of the application. Uh, is there any questions from anybody? <laughs> I hope no. not. Yeah, it's kind of nice to put them back to back right, because yes. it's it's. Uh, yeah, any thoughts, please, on track. Okay, I can see it again. Yep, no. so I have to call for testimony just because that's how it is. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any opposition for this? Te any testimony in opposition? Any testimony? Any letters? We do have a recommendation form from the Town of Lebanon side of the proposal for parcel 11 19 22. Current zoning district is agriculture and woodland in transition. Proposed zoning district is rural residential. What will be the proposed use of the parcel if the rezone is approved? Rural residents, single family home with shed for personal storage. Proposal consistent with the land use map, the zoning town comprehensive plan. Pardon me. Yes, is a proposal consistent with town goals, objectives, and development strategies as well as the town contract. And also, yes, town planning commission, town recommend approval, planning commission chairperson Donald Laughlin, dated July 19th, 2021. Town board recommend approval, Alan Tank, town chairman, Mary Sheenrock, town clerk, also dated July 19th, 2021. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Same that time, same that channel. So everything we talked about with the last one, we are also in favor of this application being approved. Okay, so we, we need a zone map motion on the zone map amendment for Robin L. Pellet application here for the town of Lebanon portion. Mike so moves. Second. Moved by Supervisor Muck, seconded by Supervisor Kussman to approve the zone map amendment. Uh, roll call vote, Muck. Yes. Kussman. Yes. Federwex. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Motion carried. Motion to close this hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Kussman, seconded by Supervisor Muck to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. So, uh, what's your pleasure? Do you wish to go back to the other one or to postpone it? Your wife, that's a good question. Um, she can't fix She texts me and I said, if, I said, if we muck turns this down, I should have sent you and she said the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's up to the committee to decide. Yep. What, 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 what is this one we're talking about? It is, it's, uh, well, this was one of the comprehensive plan amendments. It's also a contractor shop that we also received a complaint on. Um, that also it needs a zone map amendment and the commission is going to have to operate the contract. It's a little messy. Yeah. 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 So do well, we, we should put it on the next agenda. Okay. Continue with that. Yeah. Um, is it okay that we proceed forward with the comprehensive? Well, we already approved the comprehensive plan. Yeah. On that, so. we, we did those as a group. Right. So we I think that's still be okay. Yeah, that's still right? okay. Well, let's yeah. continue. Is that a separate issue? It is. Yeah, yeah. Separate. Yeah. So, so what he's got, this is Jeffrey A. Paprath. 
And so it's a zone map amendment in a conditional use. That's right. right. No. So he, he actually had a three step process. Yeah. That's right. All told. Yeah. But did you have any indication he might not? No. 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 We didn't hear from him. So what, what kind of contractor shop is, is this guy? I also was messy around. Same as the last one. He's a landscape contractor. I think he may do some tree cutting. Yeah, tree cutting. Like oh, is this, was this a guy in north of the... Yeah, he was north of the pine tree. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yep. We were looking and I didn't... Gentlemen, like, my suggestion is that we don't have table talk outside the formal public hearing on a pending application. So okay. the proper motion be, would be to continue the uh, public hearing on this uh, application for the zoning map amendment and the CUP until the next scheduled hearing that there's a slot for. I don't know, um, we, we probably have applications that have been um, queued up for the next couple of hearings. So I don't know what the volume is like, but if we could just move forward that way, that would make me most comfortable, thanks. Okay, so now that agenda, is, is it already published? The August, yeah, it's next week. So that's been, that's three weeks ago. So we can't add it to that agenda we now? Not be able to so we have the August 31st one. Um, our next one that we're looking at is October 5th, actually. For, um, the sermon's already running for it, so I don't think there's any any change in his operations or anything sure. like that. We haven't stopped him from operating. Um, if we don't like to delay things, and we sure don't like to waste agenda time, but um, it's probably best to have it. Talk about it. I, I feel more comfortable since here. I, I feel the same way. So it's impressive in here. You probably don't want to. You're, you're absolutely yeah, right. absolutely. He's, he's not stopped from operating. He's still, okay. So then, then uh, Diane, how do we want to work this? So that we'll just continue this till, uh, till the next public. So Jason, yeah, Jason's saying what, what the date, October 3rd, Jason, you said? Okay, I think it's October. October 5th. Okay, so right, which we still have to clear to make sure it's available. I know that doesn't. I know the first sure. Tuesdays are bad with you, and um, we ran into some scheduling issues at the end of September. Okay. Regardless, the next. Okay, I'm. I'm. Uh, I think that it's going to work with me because she's she she has two days of chemo and twenty eight days off, and so we've had several thirty one day months. So uh, August, she's yeah. Actually, she's she's got a double treatments in August. So okay. we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit because of the 31 day month. Okay. Two of them so far. So, right, so moved. motion made uh, to uh, continue the Jeffrey A. Paffrath hearing. Is there a second? Second by Supervisor Murphy. Uh, moved by Supervisor Murphy. Second by Supervisor Murphy to continue the Jeffrey Paffrath meeting when it can be on the next published agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So it's opposed, motion period, thank you. Okay, so. Now, did I talk too fast or? I just, it just seemed that to me that a lot of this was. Cut and dried. Yeah. Yeah, a couple more just easy. Four of them were two to two. To yes, two. right, right. Yeah. So I, I, I just didn't want to beat it to death either. But I, I don't. I hope I didn't cut anybody off. No, so. I think it was. I think it was well done. Yeah. Diane, are you still there? Yes, I am. And you guys miss one whale of, of a thunderstorm while the meeting's been going on. So hopefully everybody had their car windows rolled up. <laughs> so. Oh. <thank> you. <laughs> Diane. What can I help you with? Diane, my question is, even though they're listed separately and they're intertwined and connected, can we ever act on them as a one, one setting instead of calling the individual up twice for the same thing? Yeah, I think I like it the way it's set up. So it just, it just seems cumbersome, a, a little bit more cumbersome, but I think it's in terms of the, the format that we've created to have them separate makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. And, and down the road, yes. when, when we come back and look at it, it's a lot cleaner. You sure. Because you know exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So it is clunky. <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. And, and I'm going to hop off now. So um, enjoy the rest of your meeting. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. Right. Yeah. So I guess it's just on to the next bullet points after. Yep. Yeah, so new vehicle update. New vehicle update. So I just want to give you guys an update because remember at the last when the last meeting we had discussed, uh, and you guys made an action to uh, buy that Equinox from Neville's. 
Um, so I had contact Nevels and let them know that we were looking to purchase the, the uh, Equinox that he had quoted me previous. Uh, he had told me that it's going to be about two to three weeks before the vehicle is ready. Um, and so I'm still waiting to hear back from the salesman. Um, oddly enough, I've been trying to get a hold of him. It's, uh, I've been joking in the office about how strange it is that I'm trying to hound a salesman because I'm trying to buy a car from him. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, it's usually it's the other way around. Right. You try to you know, shake yeah. the salesman. But um, so I, I had my, my red blinking lights going on my phone. So hopefully that's him this morning letting me know that it's going to be ready this week or early next week. Uh, so that, that's really where we're at. It's just a matter of when the vehicle becomes comes in and we're able to come pick it up. Uh, I already contacted Heidi. I got it squared away in terms of the actual purchase of it. So now it's just a matter of actually getting it. Well, that's the good news. Yeah. That is the good news. All things considered, it seems okay. And I, I just ordered a replacement garage door, and they said it's an eight week wait. It's an odd size. Eight weeks for a garage door. That's true. Made in Illinois. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that tells you something. Yeah. Yeah. People from Illinois are weird. Yeah, yeah. We used to a new washer and dryer. We waited. I didn't say that. Over two months for. It. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. 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 Well, when we were looking at buying that uh, trailblazer, because the trailblazers were made in Korea, and they were saying it takes six months. Yeah, and yeah. what's interesting is yeah, that. Thank you. We'll see yeah, you, Jerry. Thank you. Looks like you got. Looks like you shouldn't get too wet that way. Your car. There's supposed to be a paper filled out. Where do I? What do I do with that? It's walking that. Yeah. 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 Um. They go buy a, a car dealer now. There ain't no cars a lot. No. Yeah. The line, I don't think, has a car. There, I think all he's got is pickups there. Yeah. I don't think there's a car for sale out there. I was buying the Ford one because of my list of funds for the very foundation. But anyway, Mr. Carlos was there and I just said, any news on what you're going to get the vehicle? No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, when I contacted Clinton Ford to give an estimate for our fleet vehicle here, uh, that's what he was saying. He was saying that he was kind of pushing me toward a used car instead of buying a new because of that, because it's going to take forever for you to get it. Yeah. And the other issue is that we're buying it right at the time where they're changing the model years. So it's also a little bit interesting that way. And sure. oddly enough, I never actually heard back from Clinton. Um, so, but in, in any case, is this, is this a 22 or 21? You know, to be honest with you, I think it's a 22, but I got to double check with him because it's right on the bubble. So, and, and it sounded like when he was talking to me about it, he said that he wasn't so sure which one he was going to actually be getting from the factory because we're, we're right on that bubble. So it's, I mean, there's no difference. You know, we're not going to notice it. They didn't make any changes or anything, you know, so it's a brand new vehicle either way, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so Years ago, they used to change the style every year. Now they, yeah. they might make it go 10, 10 years. Huh? Oh, yeah. You can hardly tell it's every yeah. mile years. And my old car will look new for a hundred. Yeah. yeah. There, there you go. go. See? I think uh, I read on my phone yesterday it says 53 models that are, are American cars are don't have a part that's made in America. Yes, right. I read that. I that's that's really the problem. Crap. 53 like different vehicles. There isn't a part made in the United States right? anymore. Yeah. That's, yep. that's, that's crazy. Did you know that there's more Toyotas made in America than Ford? Toyota yeah, is, yeah. is huge. Yeah. 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 What is it, Blend, Tennessee or Kentucky or someplace, isn't yeah. it? Yep. Yeah. 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 My Subaru came from Indiana. They, they looked ahead and then they bought ahead on chips or they made arrangements. They didn't suffer with this chip shortage like the others. Yeah. Uh, a while back, and I saw they were telling about uh, these big container ships that were losing containers in the middle of the ocean. Uh, yeah, there goes our computer chips and down in the drink. Well, it was stuck in the Suez Canal there. One ship, one thing at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 I don't want to ride on those. I don't Okay, I'm sorry, I got off subject here. So, 
Clerk update. Yeah, so like Dennis was saying, uh, already foreshadowed the bullet point here because that the vehicle is the good news. Mm -hmm. So the, the bad news is the update we have in our planning and zoning clerk. So we had uh, interviews, uh, when was it? Two weeks ago now? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah about two weeks ago. Uh, Give it somewhere, somewhere uh, maybe. Uh, and two gals out of that group really stood out uh, for us. It was a younger gal and an older gal. And so we sent both of them to Dr. Fico for some testing. And Dr. Fico had told us that the younger gal is probably going to more than likely cause some issues in the office. Uh, so, um, and so there was one of the kind of steered us away. And then the, the, uh, the older one uh, said that would probably work out well for us. And we, we liked her, thought that she had some really good experience. Um, and so we offered the position to her and she ultimately ended up declining it. Um, what we ended up hearing was that her current position, they sat her down and gave her a nice raise and told her, you know, she ended up, so she ended up staying. So, um, although her family says she's nuts, yeah, <laughs> I'm taking the county job. Right. <laughs> but so that's, beside the point. that's beside the point. So where we're at right now, because uh, we've been without a clerk for some time, and it's it is a very trying situation. It, it's a it's unbelievable how much you you notice how important a position is when you're when you don't have one for a while. Uh, and so recasting is going to take some time. It's going to be a minimum of three weeks before we start, you know, go through the interview process and all of that. So uh, but what we're doing though is that there was one employee that had worked at the courthouse for some time up in the clerk of courts uh, office, and she ended up taking the summer off to take care of some ailing family members, um, and she is now looking to come back into the courthouse. And so we're looking to have an informal interview with her tomorrow afternoon around 2.30. Uh, myself, Jason, and Laura just to sit down with her to kind of go over the position with her to see if she's actually interested in it. So she, once she understands what we really do and what the position actually entails, uh, we know anecdotally already that she has a level of interest in the position. Uh, so we're cautiously optimistic that we might be able to get somebody on in the short term that we know is a, I hate to put it this way, but it's a bit of a known quantity. It has already worked in the courthouse for some time. So we can talk to people who have worked with her for years. So we can, you know, we have a level of assurance or a level of call. Yeah, What's that? You have done that, I assume. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be in conversation with Terry because she, she uh, oh, yeah. 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 If she's actually, after talking to her, if she sounds like she's very serious about taking this over, we'll make sure to do our due diligence and making sure that she'll match the office. You bet. And so once she decides, if she does decide that she's interested in the position and we want to move forward, we'll still have a formal interview. And so you, you'll be notified of that. This is just an informal, just a meet and greet tool about us. What do you mean by a formal interview? An actual formal interview, meaning, you know, with a representative from HR, representative from our committee there, you know. Like we sat in and like we fill out an application. Right. Go through the, the, the actual formal process. That would be the only one. We only have the, yes, that's right. Yes, exactly. Well, it is what it is. No, we actually, well, it, it worked out really well to get a nice light at the end of the tunnel in terms of this person being available and saying that she's interested too, you know, so that, that really helped. Yeah, yeah. It, it was dark there for a second when we found out that she declined because I thought, boy, boy, another three more weeks, but. Uh, you know, one, one thing that came out of HR that I thought was interesting that we should relay back to the committee, um, the starting wage on this is the same as what they're starting at Taco Bell right now. Yeah. And so that, you know, that's something to mm -hmm. think about. The wage issue is the wage issue. issue. It's, it's a bit of an issue. <laughs> and I know I, because I was up north, actually I was up north the same week that Dwayne was up north. And I can tell you up there, I mean, there was a sign in almost every business looking to hire. Yeah. And you go down here, it's the same thing. Yeah. There is hiring shortage, labor shortages. Just, I mean, it seems like it's just a pervasive issue. And W closed late last night. Yeah, fifteen dollars an hour. Culver's was closed on Sunday afternoon. They don't have enough help. No. Yeah. 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 This Burger King out here, uh, it's open, but not the dining room. The only drive up. And uh, keep the labor now, yeah. And sometimes it's a little bit of 11 to 15 dollars an hour. Starting. I don't know. I noticed last time when I came back from my ambulance meeting, they were closed. 
It's unreal. Yeah. Does the AW have root beer flavored ice cream right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's the, where's the stop? Yeah, I don't like my beer flavored ice cream. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <I'm different. laughs> okay. So do you have to go back to HR then and, and, and see if you can increase our wages uh, to keep qualified people or are you going to get somebody? Well, we actually heard talks already about reclassing yes. that position, yes. but there isn't a whole lot of wage jump because this, where they're at is all the way to the end. If we bump them up, they're going to need to go back. It's yeah. A less than yeah. 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 The, the starting wage that we have around right now is still a three, and we're going to be looking at moving that to a four. Exactly. So the starting wage that we have right now would actually be about the same equivalent to moving the height mm -hmm. back to the new. Well, right. no, but I mean, it, it's, but there's growth. Yeah. Yeah. There is growth. I mean, yeah. that's what you yeah. do. You gain headroom in terms of yeah. you know future advancement. Yeah. Yeah. Because if she was upstairs and making money, or well, I don't know what it, you know, but now she's got to come downstairs and. Uh, Start over again, that don't make much sense. I wouldn't take the job, sure. you know. No, I, think, I think, too, she should be give, given credit for her, uh, years of service to the company. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's how many years was she with? I did good question. Yeah, 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 you know, sure. understandable, right, and uh, right. so on and so forth, right. right. The seniority figure at a uh, at the county level or the department that somebody works. So we don't really have a seniority situation. I mean, it's really more of a union thing where we where you, where seniority matters. I mean, we still have you know where you are and the steps, you know, and things along those lines in terms of when you get redlined or not. Um, and so, you know, one thing that you know, and I already had this conversation with Dana where, you know, similar to what being discussed now is that, you know, we can take a look and see where she was previous, you know, to see if we can figure it out to, you know, to make it so she does not going, you know, we want her to go backwards because that's the thing is it's not fair, you know, plus, I mean, that's the thing, but she does have a lot of experience in the courthouse, you know, that means something. So, but once, once we know that she's actually going to move forward with this and she's going to fit into this, we'll get into more serious conversations with HR. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, we're getting sick and tired of this. Well, you know, Jenna was great. Tough, 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 tough yeah. guys to work for. Yeah. You know, Jenna was really broken up on leaving. She did not want to leave at all. It, you know, but the thing of it is, though, it, it was one of those where it made a ton of sense. You know, she ended up getting an associate's degree in HR and she got a job in HR. It all made sense in terms of, you know, like I told her, we're not going to hold you back. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, we trust yeah. 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 <laughs> Somebody <laughs> wants to improve yeah. themselves, they want to improve themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we keep encouraged that. Right. Yeah, well, yeah that's what life's all about. Yes. yes. Yeah. Not to say that we don't still give her a hard time. Well, yeah. You know, because we still talk to Jeff, because Jeff and her dad, you know, we keep telling Jeff whenever he's in our office on an AT thing about her attendance level has been terrible. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I tried to recruit a little young lady for you. Oh, she, she's got a job and she wants to stay there. So I stay there. Fine. Yeah. And that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. We're still on the air. We're still on YouTube. We're not done. Yeah. Anything else on the clerk before we move on to the agenda? Uh, move on to the budget? Okay. Okay. So the first first sheet here is just a, a summary summary sheet. Um, I suppose that little way it would be easier to, to to show you. It'd probably be easier if we just started on the on the second page here, just to kind of give you a feel for what you know in terms of changes. Um, so that the first part here, when we have the uh, private sewage grant, the so that went, that's related to the Wisconsin fund. And so that's basically if we ever use any monies from the Wisconsin fund, that just gets automatically, there's a, a match that comes out of here. So there really is no 
you know, whatever uh, revenue we get from there is automatically just offset with expense. So it's just a one-to-one -one because whatever we have no, you know, whatever we spend, we get brought back money one-to-one. -one. So it's just a budget neutral thing. So that's, this is always just set as a 15,000 no change. Um, the second one down here is our building permits. This is a new line of revenue that we have coming in. Um, so the first thing I just want to quick point out to you, if you take a look at the 2020 actual amount, you see we brought in about $1,250 uh, in fees in the, for the building permits. So again, as, as a review, so we get 10% of every building permit we get. And that's for uh, for enforcement issues that we need to deal with any types of violations in terms of that. So. Um, you can see though in 20, uh, 2021, the six month actual, we see we're coming in at 1619. Uh, we know that that's going to, in the end, that's going to be higher now because the six month actual is not actually a six month because we're, it's more August. It's not, it's, you know, it's a, it's more of an eight month than a six month. Um, but in terms of the 2021 uh, estimated, I'm figuring in the end, we're going to come in at roughly 35. That's just a guess because we never really have any idea how that's going to go. Uh, but really, more importantly, what I'm looking at is the 2022 of taking that to 5,000. We know that we're going to be adding more municipalities. So um, uh, number one, the township of Dayton and Farmington, we know that those two towns, the town uh, uh, building inspector Bob Underberg has been talking about retirement. I think he's actually serious this time. Um, and so I think at the end of this year, he just might actually retire in the town of Dayton and Farmington have already said that they want to come under a county, uh, county building inspection. And we know that there's several other towns that have contracts that exist right now. They're going to be expiring at the end of 2021, and they're looking at coming under county building inspection as well. So I really have no idea exactly how this is going to play out because I don't know. Um, you know, those are all anecdotal evidence. We haven't seen any actual paperwork or anything. So it's just one of those or, or, to be honest, I'm kind of making that up. I really don't know what we're going to get for revenue because I don't know 100% what's going to happen with these towns if they sign on or not. So I'm putting that as a revenue of $5,000. That's all you can do. This is uh, uh, no history to go by. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. We're just starting out on this. And, and I think that this is the way it's going to be actually going into the future because the more I'm hearing, the more, because the, the thing is we are building inspectors. They're they're, they're getting up there in age and they're getting to the point to where they're starting to retire. And so what we're hearing is that there are more and more are going to be coming under, uh, under the county. And we're also hearing there's villages that want to come under county as well. Uh, the village of Iola, the village of Scandinavia, the village of Embarrass, and, uh, and Marion has actually been contacting us as well about potentially coming under the county building inspection. Um, but again, we don't know how serious any of that is. We all know it's, it's a consideration, but we'll see. Well, and, and the amount of dollars here involved is not going to skew our budget. No, no, at this point. Yeah, no, no. we're not talking about big money. No. Uh, uh, St. Lawrence was asking me if, uh, if there'd be a way to speed it up because people are used to uh, applying for a building permit and, and getting it. And there's like a two week wait. Is that right? It's In St. Lawrence? That's what they're telling me about uh, with their, if they go to counties. Oh, no, in county, we would be able to get it faster than that. Okay. Much faster than that. Because that's that's just, that was a concern that's, you know, they, people are used to getting a permit when they go in and ask for it. Sure. They pay the fee and walk sure. out with it. Yeah, what so, we're hearing is turn on time more like two days. Okay. Yeah. Two I mean, days, it's, it's, not, not the day out, though. Yeah. We, we did that with land use permits for a long time. Yeah. I've already had yeah. yeah. major yeah. issues with doing it over the counter. Yeah, okay. yeah, we had problems issuing permits over the counter. So now we issue them as a, as a first come, first start serve. So when you get an application, it goes on the pile, and then we go always okay. with them, at least the land use permits. Yeah, the land use permits for sure. Care of. Okay. Yep. But the building and the building permits are the turnaround time is really fast on that. So what the general engineering has told us, it's a really, it's a 48 hour window that they use in terms of time calling them and getting the inspection. So okay. it's it's much faster than okay. and, and also the issuance of it. A lot of what we're finding too is we they'll get the permits in, but they don't pay for them. You know, they'll get the paperwork in, but they don't get the physical permits. They they come in and get paid at our office, bless you. And then they then we then they issue, the permit gets issued as well. Okay, thank you. Um, sanitary permits. I'm keeping that at this this staying level at sixty thousand. This, this is kind of a 
this is always a bit of a tricky one. 60,000 is really kind of where it seems to be the, the happy medium. You'll see in 2019, we came in at 55.9. In 2020, we came in at 66. Um, and our six month, which again is a strong six months, is, uh, is right around just under 30. Um, so it, turned, it seems that 60,000 is the most reasonable when it comes to what we, are, we typically get uh, for sanitary permits. Um, zoning permits, on the other hand, this, this, is, uh, this is a bit interesting. So just to point out again, uh, 2019, we took in 130, just over 130. Uh, 2020, we only took in 158, which was the highest that we have on record that we've ever taken in. Um, and so you take a look at our six month, we cover right now we're at 76. I'm, at, I'm guessing our estimate to come in at 140, and I think that's actually going to be pretty accurate, if not slightly conservative. So what I'm doing is I'm raising the revenue on our 2022 budget to uh, an additional $10,000. I think that 130,000 is still conservative. I think that that is a very reasonable way to look at it. Right now, our permit levels, our permit levels this year are above last year, and last year was a record year. Um, and so I, I reading the tea leaves and talking with Mark Sether, the, the interest rates are staying are low and they're sound like they're going to stay low. I hear uh, 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 construction costs are starting to go down. I'm hearing more and more people interested in building homes new instead of buying off the market because the market is so overheated. Well, you know, because everything is so different. There's nothing to pick from and whatever you are picking from, it's a bidding war, it's expensive. So I hear a lot of people talking about building new. And so I think 130,000 is actually pretty reasonable given our market conditions. Where we're yes, at. yes, they are. Yeah, two by fours are going down, OSB is going down. Yep, yep. Um, mitigation permits. So mitigation permits, this is the, uh, 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 again, we have that joint uh, the shared position with Dan McFarland over in Land and Water. He helps us out with all of our rain gardens and um, shoreland, uh, shoreland to wetland issues that we have. Uh, and so, this uh, I'm keeping that at a 2022 at 2000. Uh, we've kept it at 2000, and this again, this is one of those. We, we you know, the the 2021 uh, six month actual is 500. The 2021 estimated I'm, I'm looking at coming in at 1500. If you take a look at our previous in 2020, we took in 2100. It's Again, it's not a whole lot of money that we get from this. This is not a lot of revenue. Um, and, and to be honest, this is something that I've been working with Brian on in terms of increasing the amount that we get on these mitigation permits because we're finding that um, we spend more staff time on these when it comes to enforcement and violations on this than what we are actually getting uh, monies for. Um, and so that's something that, and Brian was totally agreeable to this and he, it makes a ton of sense to him as well. So that's something that the two of us have been working on. Um, under the maintenance fee, the sanitary. Uh, so this is somewhat static now because we are taking this on the taxes. So as long as you're paying your taxes, you're automatically paying that $5. And so in talking with Lara, 62,000 is pretty much what we should be getting on an annual basis. Um, you'll see if you go back in time, now, this is all skewed because when we first started it, the reporting on this was off. You'll see in 2019, we took in 120,009, and then in 2020, we only took in 6,000. That's not accurate. That's not real. It just got booked because when, that's when we first started the program. So we had that one year correction where we took in a, a lot of money. And then, but since it got in on taxes, the money was actually brought in in January, February for the previous year. So that's why there is this discrepancy. In the end, it should be roughly 62,000 in a, in a, if everybody does what they're supposed to be in terms of paying your taxes, we should be getting 62,000 in terms of revenue for that. Um, and so the maintenance fee, the, the violation, um, we always have this as zero, because that's always our goal is to have compliance and don't we don't want them, you know, the idea of budgeting for violations seems a bit yeah. backwards to me, I guess we do because we do whatever we do all kinds of after, uh, do all kinds of work to try to avoid violations. But uh, again, you know, it just it's inevitable. It happens. 
And so, but you'll, you'll see the one nice thing though, that's interesting is that 2019, we had an 89 or 8,700 and then in 2020, uh, 12,000. You'll see in 2021, what happened here, we had a drastic decrease in that. So what we're doing is starting to work. We're getting less and less violations and less and a lot less people paying in the late fees. So this is really helping out. And we knew this was going to happen with this Sioux system, with it happening automatically. Yeah. You know, so we're not pinching people for the late thirty-five dollars, which is really nice because that, that those are those are hard conversations to have. I can promise you, I I have those conversations quite often, and none of them are pleasant. Um, and so, in summary, the the change, the net change for revenue is twelve thousand dollars increase. Next down the line here on page three, you'll see this is just personal services, which is just which was basically added in. Uh, the, I have no input on this. This is just added in by uh, finance or HR. I, I think it's HR that actually um, puts that in. We didn't. I didn't make any changes to our contracted services, uh, junk cleanup contracted services, you know, the cell phone, uh, telephone repair service contract. This is tricky because. Cell phones are just expensive. <laughs> and so they started out cheap, but they aren't anymore. Oh, it's just it's just <laughs> something else. They do their so, yeah. I got that at 1800 and unfortunately it sounds like we're just gonna be spending 1800 You see 2020 uh, was 1863. I got that at 1800 I, I think, that, you know, and um, telephone 924, 1017. I had that still as a thousand. You'll see our, our six month is 317. Um, you know, I think that's still be reasonable for that. So the under supplies and expense. So I've made no changes to the postage. We still usually spend over five thousand to six thousand dollars in postage. And so a sixty four hundred is a prudent to keep it at that. Um, one thing I will say that, you know, even though we have done a lot of zone map amendments and conditional use, in fact, we've had more this year than we had in previous years. But one thing we haven't done this year is a lot of a really large rezone. And a lot of that is because we are so inundated right now when it comes to land use permits, zone map amendments, comp plan amendments, and conditional use permits that it would really just overload the system if we were to do a very large rezone project. Um, those those projects increase pro, uh, postage costs immensely because you're talking about sending out hundreds and hundreds of letters in one process. Um, I have several that I have waiting in the wings, the town of Royalton, the town of Waiwiga are the two that come to mind right away. Um, there is a very, two very large projects I have to do out there in terms of um, a lot of wetland areas that are, they don't have any base zoning district. And so we need to go in there and get that fixed. It's not a real high priority situation because the only ones that are the problem are the parcels that are 100% wetland. So there's really not much going to get me done with them anyways in terms of buildings. So there's no sense of urgency at the ground level. It's just something that we would just like to clean up in time. So because there's no high level of um, you know, concern on that, we're, gonna, we're letting that wait until it makes more sense uh, from an uh, office standpoint. Um, there are a couple of changes though, as we go further down, uh, photocopying, about $2,600 is about what we spend on photocopies. Office supplies, I'm keeping that at 5,000. Uh, you'll see in years past, we've kept pretty close to that 5,000. Um, so right now we got about 2,000 spent as of, well, as of a little while ago when this was first ran. Um, so the really the only thing we have left for expenses associated with office supplies that I'm looking at is our tablets are due for replacement. Um, they're already at their end of their service life. So now we're at a point now where we got to get new ones. Like we were talking before about sh uh, chip shortages. Well, the chip shortages are affecting tablets. It's really hard to get a tablet. If you find them, they're expensive. So I'm trying to hold off on buying those because I'm just a student that paid through the nose for, for something that I know full well that if we just waited a little bit longer, we can get something probably even better and save a lot of money. Um, and so the reason why I'm saying I got $3,000 left in that line item and I'm kind of sitting waiting and hoping tablets don't 
I can actually buy some at the end of the year and have it actually make sense from a fiscal standpoint, but we're, we'll see. I might just be carrying over a lot of extra re revenue in that, if that's so be it. I'd rather do it that way than just pay way more than for something that, you know, overpay for something, I guess. Um, but that's that's the primary thing that we're going to have to be uh, spending on. And just so you know what we're talking about, they're like six, seven hundred bucks a piece, and we need four of them. So, um, dues. I bumped this up to fourteen hundred. I asked because next year is a time where uh, we're a lot, quite a few are up to uh, uh, redo renew their dues. Um, so that's going to be a little bit higher than what is typical. So you'll see that that when I have that, uh, I bumped that up four hundred dollars. That's going to be a one year thing. After this year, should we should be able to take that back down because the way the cycle works, the the dues are good. Was it three years? Yeah, it's like three years. staggered between yeah between Mara and back to. Myself and Candace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that's why. So that's that's why there's a slight increase in that to take up for what I know is we're going to have several people looking for dues next year. Training. I'm keeping that at that same level because again, it's only seven hundred dollars. Uh, a lot of training has been. It's been hard to actually go to trainings. A lot of trainings hasn't. We haven't been. There hasn't been a lot of trainings. The last I heard, our our association has been talking about going back to having our uh, conferences. Um, we'll see. We we hope. Last I heard, they they are going to be having a conference coming this this fall in October, uh, and then again in spring in Point. But we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, so I'm just keeping that static. Uh, let's hope we can go back to our normal training. Um, you'll see here, that's what we're talking about. Mileage expenses, 1700. Um, you know, we haven't been spending a lot of money on mileage expenses because there hasn't been a lot of running around, you know, I mean, and I mean, so these are basically, you know, time spent after work driving places, you know, we obviously we always try to take fleet vehicles whenever possible because it's just cheaper for our taxpayers. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, to be in August and had only spent $152. So that kind of tells you where we're at. Wow. nowadays yeah. you know it's typically way more than that and and so i'm keeping it at that level because i'm assuming i'm hoping that we can have a bounce back year in 2022 where we're going to go back to having to drive or go back to be everything back to in person and you know um tra uh, other trail expenses same thing it's a small amount i'm keeping that static um meals again we just have a token amount of money in there if there is any need for meals we haven't used it we, we typically you know try to work around that but it's a small amount of money same thing operating site certification fees hundred dollars that's just we keep that in there's a small amount this big one here this is one i want to talk to you guys about though this is definitely uh, representing a bit of a sea change for us You'll see in 2019, we used $195 out of the operating supplies for our board of adjustment. Uh, in 2020, we only spent $80. This year we've spent 368 and I can tell you that is going to balloon. That is gonna get much higher, much higher. And the reason why is because our board of adjustment, where our board of adjustment always deals with really hard issues. That's always been, that's been the history of the board of adjustment, that's the way it is. It's a tough board to be on because you're constantly telling people no, and it's always a, it's a it's a confrontational, it's an it's an adversarial situation. And so what's happening is we're they're being taken to court. Um, if there's any group in the county that gets sued more, I'm not sure whether what it is besides the board of adjustment. Uh, we're in the middle of a lawsuit right now, um, and so now that we are increasingly being sued. Um, or I should say the Board of Adjustment is being sued. Um, and so what we need for our Board of Adjustment meetings is to have a court reporter actually in the room. Because the first thing that's asked when we have to supply the record to the circuit court system when any decision by the Board of Adjustment gets appealed is we need a transcript of the meeting. And it is incredibly hard to find somebody willing to transcribe a digital uh, file or through Zoom. Uh, the majority of uh, uh, court reporters, they want to be in the room. And the majority of them that can't be in the room, they're dealing with depositions where you have two people in the room or three people in the room, where it's really easy to identify 
the who's talking, you know, but in a board of adjustment, it's a whole different thing. We have five board of adjustment members. We have upwards of three, sometimes four technical staff present. We have all the petitioners. We have members of the public. So it's a real nightmare for the court reporters to try to transcribe something when they have no institutional knowledge of, I mean, we supply names. We try to help as much as possible, but I can tell you, the, the last two court reporters that I had do a transcription for the Board of Adjustment told me directly afterwards that they are never doing this again. <laughs> it was hard to find them to begin with. And after they did it, they said that they'll, that's it. I'll never do this again. It's that horrible. Um, so we just need somebody in the room. It's because when we have somebody actually taking a record right real time, we know that if that if that gets appealed to circuit court and therefore, and if it goes to court of appeals, wherever it goes from there, all we gotta do is say contact a court reporter and say we need a copy of the record. Boom, they give us a copy of the transcription, we're done. It's just a benefit. It's unfortunate that we have to spend the money on this, but in the end, it's worth it. people have legal options and they and then they all tell you they 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 take it to heart. They we they we get appealed. It happens. So I see I have that bumped up to 2,500, and I see that being the new normal when it comes to Board of Adjustment operating supplies. Um, if anything, we'll see if that has to go north of that. We'll see how it goes next year. Um, we, as a staff, we always try to minimize the need for variances as much as possible. We try to talk people out of it because the last thing we ever want to do is have someone deal with a, you know, it, it's not a very great process to go with, and it can be expensive. So we don't want someone to go through a process that if it's they don't you know to waste their time and money but it's a legal option that people have and they're willing to exercise it so operating supplies to the greenway project we have five hundred dollars in there uh i'm just keeping it at that amount that five hundred dollars has actually proved to be very uh effective for us we've spent most of that money has been spent on advertising um, so uh, Facebook, uh, uh, general social media is what we use that for. Uh, we're also going to be using that money for uh, like signs that we have, like Greenway signs. So anytime we have a sponsored project for Greenways, we give them a sign saying sponsored in part by Greenways. You know, all those signs are things that are going to be paid for administratively. So we just hand them a sign when they're done. Like, I'm going to be heading to the city of Wyoming here as soon as I can find a free time and a dry time uh, to take a look at their uh, their project and to hand them their sign. And that's just going to be our, uh, that's the typical process that we have. So we'll, we'll keep it at that amount. Right now, $500 makes, it's, it's a very reasonable amount and it, it, it has really helped us out. Um, so uh, repair, maintenance, supply of the vehicle equipment, I'm keeping it at 2000, just makes sense from a re reasonable standpoint. Uh, fuel, I'm keeping that at, I, I actually have bumped that to 22 because of the fuel prices. I'm just guessing fuel prices are probably gonna go up. Now they're going down. Maybe they go down, maybe they go up. I mean, yeah. it's always one of those tea leaves that, you know, you're one refinery fire away from $4 a gallon, so. Um, it's a, that's always kind of a tricky one for us. Legal notice is a publication. We're keeping that uh, static at 25. Vehicle assurance that is set up standard. We're basically giving guidance to keep that at 2150. That comes from Heidi. Again, that 15,000 that we have here, that 15,000 is our matching amount that we have for the Wisconsin fund up on top. Um, Greenways, keeping that at 25. Um, so that's been really helpful in terms of keeping that project, uh, keeping that going. All told, in terms of last page, page 505, the amount of change is an actual decrease to the net tax levy of 5,134 or an overall decrease of budget of 1%. How do you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I don't like it. She was already thankful when I showed her when I gave her my budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. We still need a motion to pass this on. Yes, please. I'm so moved. Second. Who seconded first? <laughs> <laughs> moved by Supervisor Bedowitz, seconded by Supervisor Kusman to approve the proposed budget for 2022 and send it out to finance. All, do we need roll call or just? I would do a roll call. Mark? Yes. Kusman? Yes. Federowitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Any questions or comments on? I know we just took a special action on it, but any questions or comments on the budget or where we're headed or going? I think you have more money than you put yourself. Yeah, and it, which is good. Yeah. Yes, it is good. 
It is good. And I, I try to be as reasonable as possible. And I, I should say, I try to be as fiscally conservative as possible, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't want to overshoot no. revenue. I, I just assume keep it, keep right. it moderate. Good way to do it. When, when, when is the next vehicle due to be replaced after no present situation? Oh, good question. I think the next vehicle is a van that we got from Land and Water. Yeah. And not a young no, that is not a young vehicle. Um, is that probably two years, three years from now? Gosh, I would get, I would venture to guess, yeah. And then the one after that, oddly enough, is actually the Jeep. Well, that's okay. how, how are we handling that as far as you build up? Uh, you purchase or so it's in a capital improvement. We have a twenty-five thousand capital improvement that we have as a recurring. So that's what we. It's already pre-programmed oh, in there. Okay. I and so what I do is uh, once we get to a point where we're due for another vehicle of next year, I have a conversation with Heidi, like I've been doing with this Blazer. I've been telling her hold off on it, hold off on it. You know, I don't want to because the thing is, now that we we're spending more money on maintenance than we are in buying a new vehicle because it's actually we're money ahead that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that the Blazer got to the point where it turned into a safety situation where we're putting good money after bad. Right. Um, and so uh, that's the way we do it. Is that, so once the van is up for uh, it's due. What I like to do is we take it to highway like we did with the blazer. We took it in the highway, had a mechanic take a look at it and give us a feel. So what do you think? You know, where are we at with this vehicle? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this a matter of fixing the brakes, putting new tires on, or we're good for two more years, three more years? Or is this a situation where we got some issues, more structural major issues? Mm -hmm. And then I tell Heidi, you know, hey, hold off on it. So then what we do is everything just kind of gets bumped mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's part of that five year capital plan. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. The vehicles last longer than they used to until it's sold, eats them up. Right. Yeah. It's still run. Well, no, no, but I mean, that, that's. <laughs> yeah. Don't put your foot through the floor. Huh? <laughs> right. well, yeah. 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 She loves to go fast and slam the brakes. Go fast, slam the brakes. I mean, you see that stop sign? Goes, take your foot off the gas and yeah. let it roll up there. But no, you see the stop sign. Yeah, well, I think you see that. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So then after that, we are looking at, we, we had issues with the uh, with the rest of September. So October 5th was the next potential meeting. Date. You said you might be able to make that, Jim? Yeah, that one I should be okay. We will. I got a doctor's appointment at 7.30 in the morning. I should be out of there by 8.30 or okay. 9. So I should be able to be here by 10. So if we, okay, so 10 o'clock would be better for you? On that day, yeah. On the, so at 10 o'clock on the 5th, you want to start? Yeah, the one on the 5th of October, if you could make it at 10 o'clock instead of 9.30. Next, Next week is 9.30? Next week is 9.30. Mm -hmm. yes. Set it up with stuff like we had today, and then it goes like work. Yeah. Today was <laughs> yeah. incredibly yeah. fast. Yeah. Well, well it was the one messy one we didn't get. Yeah. 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 Right. Now that'll be for October 5th. Oh, yeah. How yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. come we don't have anything in September? Well, we, in terms of scheduling, the earliest we'd be able to do is the 21st. And the 21st is county board. Um, the 28th, we didn't have any rooms available for it. I think it was the last day of the uh, Wisconsin Counties Association for it as well. Um, and then that, I thought it was up to the 5th. So the 20, 28th is, I would not be able to. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, so we, we have one application right now that they'll have a little bit of an extended wait, but uh, we, we just weren't able to make it work. So, so, yeah. so we'll have to wait an extra week until it comes up. Yeah. And I don't think they're chopping up a bit too bad to get people started. Um, there'll be more by then. Good. Yeah. Motion adjourned. We're adjourned. All right.